Frank Seppi for Muscle and Fitness, Fit to Serve National Military Fitness and Wellness Month. I am here with Robert Wilkins. And Rob, who's our guest today? James Gaiden. Hey, buddy, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me on. Yes, we're we're glad to have you. Uh, Xavier is a Marine veteran. Serve, um, actually, why don't you tell us your story? How many years did you serve? Where did you start serving? And actually, let's start at the beginning. Why did you join the military? So I served 21 years. I actually started and why I came in. Um, I'm originally from Houston, Texas and Monroe, did Louisiana. You start, did you serve when you were four? Because you said 21 years. You look way, way, way too young. <laughs> <laughs> Times for that many years, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, 21 years. And um, I, I was born in Houston, Texas, but I came into the Marine Corps from Louisiana. And yeah, I mean, I've been... I was in Japan for about seven years, deployed while I was there, de deployed twice while I was there, and then twice here, uh, here in stateside. Came in California in 2005, been here ever since, basically. And well, why did you join the Marines? Yeah. Out of all the services, why did you pick the Marines? Same question. <laughs> so, funny thing is, my uncle was in Desert Storm and he was writing us, but he was Air Force. So, for some reason, I kept seeing during that time he was writing us. I was in school and I kept seeing the commercials for the Marine Corps. But I ended up joining the Army National Guard because it was close to my family in in Louisiana. And I was like, oh, well, I could just go to the Army National Guard and it's close to my family. So I'll be close to everybody. Well, I signed up, did everything, and they did not pick me up for boot camp. So I went in the next day to school and the Marine Corps recruiter was there and I just said, okay, hey, I didn't leave. So I'm still here. Let's go. <laughs> that was it. It didn't pick you up. Wait, how did that even happen? <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea. I was sitting in my door with all my bags packed waiting for <laughs> the recruiter to come get me. He never came. So the next day I signed up for the Marine Corps. Wow. Is that legal? <laughs> 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 yeah they, it was they actually i actually had to help them get all the documents from the uh, recruiting station the army recruiting station so they can transfer it over so t 21 years in the military when you went in were you athletic or did you learn fitness and getting in shape through the military no actually i um i was in i played football i played basketball i ran track I was MVP in track and in basketball. And I also, I was in the choir. I played piano. I mean, I pretty much did an ROTC. I did a lot of stuff, so. And the army guy didn't show up? <laughs> no. <laughs> like a, like a five-tool military guy. <laughs> when, when you got into the military, like into boot camp, how difficult was it for you? How, well, even though you had that fitness background in sports, was it difficult? Was it a transition from things that you were doing uh, for football and other sports? I don't think it was such a big transition. The biggest transition is that for me, I, I don't like accusations. So my transition was I didn't really – get what the recruiters, the drill instructors was trying to do with me. They were trying to use me as, a, as an example. So I was the motivated one. I was always leading from the front, from the beginning, not intentionally, but it was, it's just how I am. And basically they wanted someone else to lead. So they used me as an example. And I think that I didn't understand that at the time when I was just really young. So I was just like, in my head, I was thinking, why are they doing this to me? You know, I'm not doing anything wrong, but everything I do is wrong. And basically at the end, they were like, hey, you know, it's a coming from what we're putting you through. It's like not really necessarily a privilege, but it's like an accomplishment. But I never knew that from the beginning that they were using me as an example to show everybody what they can do. So I think that was like my biggest hurdle, like dealing with it. But all the fitness stuff was great. 
But I'll tell you this, the one thing that regardless of what training you got when you're in school or high school or whatever, some of the things that they do to us in boot camp, you, you're not prepared for that. <laughs> like? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> well, now a lot of that stuff is, is considered yeah. hazing, but, but then it wasn't. So one of the things we were doing, like holding rifles by our fingertips <laughs> and like staying there a for a grip. very long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> staying there right. for a very long time. Um, but I mean, I learned a lot from that discipline definitely is one thing that I did gain from it. I mean, even though I had it before, but more so now, uh, just being structured, like I can't operate now, even as a civilian without structure, you know, a lot of those things were instilled in me. And did you, so it's like, as you said before, you were an athlete. Did you find that teamwork from sports translated to teamwork on, in the military or particularly in the Marine Corps? Most definitely. I mean, even now and camaraderie too, like you know, we say, you know, in the Marine Corps band of brothers and sisters, like it really, it really speaks volume when you're, whether you're in or out, whether you're a veteran on active duty. Um, I get uh, so many veterans or active duty that comes in here and as soon as we notice that we're we both were Marines or service members or serve, you know, we immediately click like that. And it's like we go on about our stories, about our deployments or whatnot. But I mean, that teamwork, learning how to work as a team even works in like the civilian sector with working, like, you know, being able to pull everybody together here at my job now, you know, and teaching them. You know, they may not listen at first, but in the long run, they come back and thank me and say, hey, thank you for everything you've taught me. You know, I didn't really think about some of the things before, but now I understand. So it goes a long way. Hmm. Now, how do, for people who don't know, he's a very successful IFBB Pro League men's physique competitor. How did you get interested in competing? And, and tell us about how you did in your first show. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually was n not looking for bodybuilding at all. Um, I was going, dealing with some family issues and I went to Iraq and a buddy of mine was like, hey, you should work out with me, you know, to help you relieve some of that stress. And I started working out with him and then basically I kind of fell in love with it. So I came back from Iraq and I literally bought like curl bars, weights, a bench, and, you know, I, I went all out. And then that's kind of like when I basically start learning about nutrition a little bit. You know, I started kind of changing the way I eat when I was at, uh, when I'm at work, you know, so I would walk up to the gym, train, come back, I would eat meals. I was like, you know, making portions, but not really knowing what I was doing, but I kind of had an idea. And then from there, I had a, a gentleman, an older gentleman, rest in peace, to, um, he was a former uh, bodybuilder. He pulled me aside in the gym and he was like, hey, you got a great physique. You, you ever thought about modeling or, you know, doing bodybuilding or whatever? I kind of blew him off. And then like a year later, I went to visit my family and people were stopping me in the airport. They were talking to me on the airplane, like, hey, you look great. Like, how can I look like you? Wanting to take pictures and everything. And I was like, I came back to California from Texas and Louisiana. And they were like, I was, I told them, hey, you know, maybe I'll try it this time. And it just took off after that. Literally, the, my very first photo shoot was the week of my show. And I took, did the shoot. The very next day, I placed second, 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 and fourth in the open in my very first show in bodybuilding. And um, so it just, like I said, it just took off after that. Do you, do you remember what song you used on stage? Was it, was it <laughs> Falls of Montezuma? What was it? <laughs> no, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, um, I want to say it was one of Chris Brown's songs oh, there you go. or something. I don't know. I don't even remember. 
<laughs> but all I know is after that show, my very next show, um, I did another one. I won. Basically, I was winning shows like after that in bodybuilding. And then even eventually when I stepped into the MPC IFBB, I, I qualified for nationals. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go to nationals. I'm going to get ready, take some time off, go to nationals. And then Men's Physique came out. So everybody said, you need to do Men's Physique. You need to do Men's Physique. They're going to pick your look at nationals. And he, and I crossed over to Men's Physique, did my first national, national show and played sports. And I've been, I was rocking until I got my pro card. You must have had uh... – one of the best legs compared with legs for coming from bodybuilding into men's physique in the, in the infancy, right? Of the men's physique. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I did have some really good legs. Uh, <laughs> I actually, in the Marine Corps, it started to hurt me though, because I was, I felt like I was carrying tree trunks when I was doing my, um, my PFT and that's three miles. So like my legs were burning. Frank, have you ever thought about going to Iraq to find your passion? Like, she goes to Iraq to find passion. <laughs> Never heard of this before. Maybe we should go somewhere, like some, like, you know. Some, Italy? I'll go to Italy. Place. Yeah, I'll maybe. Go to we Hawaii. Could. Let's go to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's an amazing story, though. If, if, you, if you think about it, if you didn't go, if you didn't deploy, do you think you would have found weight training another, another way? Or is this, that timing, that person, that period of your life, uh, was perfect for for you to find this new passion of yours no it, it was exactly that it was exactly perfect because i needed something to motivate me to take my mind off the things that i was dealing with and had i not left i probably would have been doing the same run of the meal just going to work and you know i didn't have anything to distract me actually i played basketball but even that wasn't enough you know i played basketball for the base in 29 palms and even that wasn't enough for me. So, seems like a, you know, fit getting ready for a show is a twenty four seven thing. Which obviously you need structure with nutrition and training and, and supplementation and everything else. So it's right in your wheelhouse. Now I think I met you probably early two thousands, right, with Body Fortress and a couple of other companies. How uh, difficult was it to deal with? Not that company in particular, but certain companies when they don't have structure, because you're such a structured person. Is it frustrating? <laughs> is it difficult it's, to deal with certain companies that don't? Yeah, structure. Yeah, <laughs> that's an inside joke, Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, again, even now, like I, I tell even my coworkers, it's like. I have to have structure. I don't like to like be all over the place, you know? Um, and then when I see something, I figure out ways. My mind is always working on something. That's one of the reasons I went, to, I'm really good at engineering and music because that mechanics of my brain like is always running. I'm always trying to come up with some kind of idea or some way to do something better. So when I see where improvements can be made, I'm, I'm always trying to like attack, attack them, even with myself. And I think that's why I've done one of the reasons I've done so well with competing, because instead of me leaving the stage and saying, oh, so-and-so, I look better than so-and-so, you know, I should have won or whatever. I attack myself and try to find weaknesses in myself, whether it be my training, my cardio or, or whatever I'm doing that I can improve, you know, I don't like to accuse anybody else. I work on myself. So same thing with establishments, whether it be competing, whether it be a working with a company, hey, this can be better. Would you try this? And I feel like some people take it in the wrong way. So they kind of like, uh, you know, high side a little. But, you know, I feel like if we look at where we feel may be an issue or the, where some improvements can be made, you know, things will be a lot better. It's called being a leader, right, Rob? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> when you're talking about all that structure and discipline, you mentioned earlier, you have two daughters. And so did that discipline and structure work, especially during their early teen years? Yes, and, and even so with my, my five-year-old now, me and my wife have a, a son that's five, and he is all over the place. 
so, you know, with my daughters, when I was a single dad, um, I had to make meals for them. I had to make meals for myself. I was picking them up from the daycare and then trying to, in between the time I get out of work and the time that they get out of school or daycare, I have to rush and get in a quick workout. And I only have that set amount of time. And, and even with our son, me and my wife go train and we take our son to the gym. We only have a set amount of time. So we have to knock out our cardio, our training and everything before we pick him up. Uh, and there are a lot of times we only have an hour. So uh, it's managing all of that to still be able to accomplish the things that you need to accomplish, whether it be towards your gear, towards your family or yourself. Have you seen since, I mean, 21 years ago, you, you, were, you started the military uh, to current day. Have you seen a downtrend in the physiques that are people joining the military now or or is it an uptake like is you know are people in less shape than they are were back in the day as opposed to now or are people more educated you think coming into the military now about fitness i, I feel like they're a lot more educated I, I i see a lot of people contacting me um whether it be messenger whether it be dms in uh Instagram or something, or even contacting me in person, they want to know about competing and if they can compete if they join, uh, or even if they're in and they're like, hey, I've been following you a while, just wanted to know how can I manage training. Uh, I still do coaching, online coaching, and then also in person. So I deal with a lot of service members and, and I do my best to teach them how to be able to manage, you know, prepping for a show or getting in shape and the same time they're focusing on their career and then doing it in a good way too. It's, it's benefit them quite a few people a lot. As a matter of fact, the uh, last trip to Iraq, uh, my last tour, I had probably about 20 to 30 uh, mm -hmm. combined forces. So we're talking Marines, we're talking um, Army, uh, Dutch, uh, I believe the Dutch Army or Dutch Air Force, uh, Navy. There was quite a few people under me, uh, service members under me from all over the world. And I got to work with them, help some of them get in shape so they can get promoted. They were getting orders, which is something that makes you feel good because you see people being able to help themselves and their families for their future. And that's another way of service. You know, you're serving through the military, but you're now serving a different way. Uh, there are many ways to serve. You know, I think Frank, he's serving because he's making sure that this Fit to Serve podcast goes off. He makes sure that he reaches out to military folks and hears their story. You served in the military, but another way that you're serving is by providing that knowledge. And I'm sure you're doing it sometimes free of charge because especially our younger military folks, they don't have the money for the proper coaching. So to have the experience that you have, to share that knowledge with them, to share, you know, the right path for them. I think it's probably an invaluable thing that you're giving to them. And first of all, thank you for doing that. But I, I'm sure there are probably hundreds, if not thousands of people who benefited from, from what you're doing and the knowledge that you have related to bodybuilding, fitness, and nutrition. How do, like one of the biggest hurdles I think for certain people is mentally, how do they get motivated? How do they get into like, you're about structure, but how do they mentally get into that? you know, day to day, do this, do that. Because I mean, you've been backstage at contests and stuff, and I'm sure it's laughable to you. They're like, oh, I have a job. I don't know how I can do this, <laughs> do this show. I'm so busy. Like, you know, you have kids, you have responsibility. Everybody has something. But is there something mentally that people can do to motivate themselves or to kind of get in that frame of mind to really follow that structure? Yeah, I know uh, I even talk to my wife about it a lot and, and I tell them you got to have something that you're passionate about, uh, especially in this industry. You know, for me, health is also an issue because in my family, you know, health issues kind of run in our, our family. So uh, I've been fortunate that not, nothing has passed through to my, my kids, but, you know, health is important. Even, even if all else fails, if you have nothing else, you know, your health is one of the primary things you should work on, regardless if you're 20s, your 30s, 50s, or 60s. 
that should be one of your your top priorities. Um, something else I like to tell everybody is people that are on the outside looking in, they believe that, oh, it, they look so great. You know, that's all they do. They don't consider the fact that from what I, from past experience, most people have come into to an era of their life where they meet a crossroad where something bad has happened and they're trying to overcome that. And bodybuilding has helped so many of us overcome that darkness or that bad thing that happened to us. It could be small or big, regardless what it is, it's something to overcome. And you become passionate about this industry. And I feel like the one thing you have to do to be able to have that structure is say, this is what I want to do and this is why. And that reason why is where you be gain your passion from to be able to move forward. So once you have something you, you're motivated about that you want to, to accomplish in life, that will drive you know your, you reaching your goal. A lot of people can't handle not winning. You know, especially if it's easier in the amateurs and then they get to the pros. And even if they win a couple of other shows and they go to the Olympia, they don't play, so whatever. Um, but how to, and then they quit. You know, the desire, the passion's gone. How do you deal with, you put your all in to an event and you don't place, like, or you, you don't do as well as you do? How do you deal with that mentally? So, you know, it, it's, it's funny because uh, I don't, you remember Venus? Yeah. Yeah. She's my sister. I, I love her to death. And um, she's a pro. And, and she, one of the things, one of the things that she told me, she said, make them remember. Mm -hmm. So you do all your homework, what we call in the industry homework. You bust your butt. You stay on your meals. You do everything you need to do in your power. And you leave it out on the table to the judges. You just show up and do your best. But remember that you're not done once you do everything before you get to the show. You still have to make, make it through the show. There's other things that everybody needs to look at. They don't look at presentation and how you, the aura that you put off when you're at the show. If you just come there just to say, oh, I'm here to win, and you just show up and then you're like, everybody else can, you know, whatever, then that's not the, that's not the, type of person we want in the industry. There's so many things that people don't think about when they come into the industry. So I always tell everybody, your first show or the first time you coming into this door and this walkway of a new industry, you need to pay attention, learn, have open eyes, you know, be willing to be willing to be a follower before you try to be a leader. Um, good example, don't jump out and do your first show and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a coach and I'm a personal trainer. Um, you know, for bodybuilding shows, whatever, when you have no experience and don't really know anything, you know, even <laughs> there's so many personal trainers stop me and say, how do you change your body so fast like that? And I can't even get my arms to look good. So we need to start doing that. You know, it's funny, being on the, uh, the inside, I've seen a lot of top competitors and how they react to not winning and you're right. Like some, I've so one competitor from the Olympia, he came in, let's say seven, he walked backstage and walked out the back door before any interviews, everything else. I saw people throw stuff, I said, but one person who yeah. I <laughs> throw stuff and everything or walk away on stage, which is completely disrespectful because it takes away from that moment, that person who, who won, their families in the audience, everybody's there. Um, you know, so it's the one person I have a lot of respect for is Ronnie Coleman. Who's Ronnie Coleman? You wouldn't know if he won or he placed sixteenth because he was so happy <laughs> at stage. <laughs> like here's a guy at the Olympia. He used to be with a company where he was like fifth, sixth place. How you doing? Like back there, happy. And when he won, he was the same gregarious guy as as he was as he was fifth or or twelfth. But I always point to him as somebody like Michael Jordan in basketball like in high school he wasn't that great like you know what i mean like he yeah, yeah. it took him time but a lot of people have expectations that are grandiose and think oh i'm gonna do one show and i'm gonna win you know like they don't know until they do but you know they have to learn like you said like they you have to take those steps and you have to kind of it has to be more than just winning it has to be getting winning. 
about yourself, you know, like getting better. What was your best, what do you think in, in all your competitions, the best package that you brought to show? What year, not your placing, but I'm saying, what do you, what were you personally happy with out of all your shows at the Zoom? I would have to say the, my very, I feel my very best was Governor's Cup 2019 before the Olympia. That was, cause it's, it's funny because um, I was dealing with a lot during that time, mm. a lot, like with the military and my family and, and we, I was dealing with a lot and I had to, we had a show lined up and we were supposed to do Columbia, me and my wife and all the, the promoters and stuff, they were amazing with us in Columbia. We had a trip paid for tickets, everything was, everything was squared away for us to go there and compete. And I wasn't even originally supposed to do the show. They found out uh, I was married to my wife and they were like, hey, ask your husband, would he come compete? And I was like, I'd love to, you know? Uh, I think Raymond was competing that year as well. And and work wouldn't let me go. They, they, they put a can literally the, a couple of days before me flying out and and I talked to my coach Kim Kim Odo with Odo's um uh, he he was like don't even worry about it he said just keep going keep moving forward and sure enough we we stayed on target for uh governor's cup and that was by far I felt like one of my best packages wow. and did you think um with all that with your friends in the in Marine Corps, were they supportive of your efforts? Because what you just mentioned, you remind me of Charjo Grant, where Charjo had to go uh, to Army War College at the same time he's competing at the Olympia. So the morning when everybody else is you know, prepping for their competition, Charjo's in college class, and he still came in 12th in the world. So with this in mind, did you find that you were very much supported by the Marine Corps and, and your fellow Marines? Were they behind you in your career and would come to the competitions to watch you and cheer you on? I, I feel like um, a lot of my junior Marines and peers were very supportive. I mean, even some of my, my uh, the leaders above me, some of them were very supportive um, during that time as well. And then there was a few that, you know, I, I felt like they were against it, but they couldn't stop me, you know, and that was the one thing I was like, you know what, the ones that did put a halt on the previous show, you know, I'm not going to let it bring me down. I'm going to keep my head up and I prayed about it uh, and just, you know, talk to my wife about it. She helped me a lot, you know, and we just, and like I said, my coach, we kept, we just kept moving forward. So a lot of my junior Marines were very supportive and they still are they're, even now. They're like, Oh, we can't wait to get back on stage. And I say, Oh, don't worry. I will be. <laughs> and so, so you just mentioned, you just mentioned your wife. And so you've said before that your wife is your hero, your stronger supporter. So tell us a little bit about your wife and what makes her so special. Well, so my wife, the one thing that drew me to my wife was that she had her own, she has her own clothing line. So she was, she had, a booth at the muscle contest shows you know when we first met so i was always the guy that helped out at the shows and basically when i started my company my board shorts i asked her for advice on how to do it and she showed me how to you know how to get started and then honestly we've been together ever since so i took a lot of things from her like even when she had my when she was after she gave birth to my son, you know, trying to get, get back into cardio and all this kind of stuff, how I pushed myself more was through her and my son, like taking him out on stroller walks and runs and stuff like that. I was able to get into the best shape of my life, you know, during that time, because I used her, her vision of getting herself back in shape after rebounding from the baby. That's what I used to get myself ready for the shows that I did leading up to the uh, Governor's Cup. Isn't it interesting? Uh, and I 
and I've dealt with this my entire life too, that you can be in great shape and inspire many people, but there are always going to be those people who don't like you or stereotype you because you're muscular or because you have a better physique. <laughs> <laughs> no matter yeah. what you do. And if they yeah. can, because if they, I don't know if it's because they, they don't, they can't do it. They can't pay for it to do it. Whether, you know what I mean? Like, cause you have to do it. So there are those people who will go out of their way out of either jealousy or what have you, or make excuses for, you know, for why you look the way you do, which is insane because I know from working with you for years, we used to get thousands of emails and stuff when you work for the companies that you were an inspiration to many people, at, you know, as far as your physique and, and uh, serving the, uh, cur the country. So it just, it boggles my mind the way some people think, but you have to push that out of the way you know what i mean uh, you know exactly what I mean. yeah yeah I yeah. yeah i i um it, it's funny because i i still get a lot of uh get get that sometimes and and again even when i was going through the, the situation i was going through and dealing with everything before i competed you know i i had you know people looking me up and down and i was like hey you know i had one officer tell me uh you look like that because you're doing something. I was like, well, let me tell you something. Have you ever tried not sitting at your computer during lunch and eating Subway and cook and chocolate chip cookies? And then very, very well, three weeks later, I saw him in the gym working out from then on. So, you know, it, it I mean, they even made memes about me and everything when I first started, you know, so it was, it's it's been a it's been a journey, but you know I always try to turn everything into positive, man, and I always try to teach people at the same time, hoping that someone would be able to learn something out of it, um, and pass it to my younger Marines. I had a young Marine who was very close to the edge, and he had thoughts of killing himself, suicide, and he was overweight. He contacted me and I ended up getting him in shape. He did his first show. Then after that, uh, his leadership was on top of him. Like, why do you want to go work out? Why are you trying to eat right and compete? Like, you shouldn't be doing that. And he eventually ended up getting married. And I mean, he's staying in shape. And I was, you know, pretty proud of that. But his leadership was on top of him, like asking him, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? So, but the fact that that guy didn't kill himself my mindset is thinking like, why didn't they kind of congratulate him or celebrate him for, you know, moving towards a positive mindset now and a positive way forward. So yeah, it's just weird, but you know, you, you know, I always, you know, thank God and try my best to keep positivity in those people, even if they say anything negative or even if they joke about it, I still, try to enlighten them, teach them something at the same time, you know, and they don't really realize I'm doing it, but I do it anyway. <laughs> Some of the toughest uh, uh, training partners I have were Marines. One of my really, really good friends um, was a gunner in a helicopter. He jumped out and he had metal rods in his knees. So metal yeah. rods in his legs. So he, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I used to train legs with them and like I couldn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, this guy's got metal rods in his knees and in his legs and he's training like how many sets are we doing and the other guy he uh he was in the marines and he uh was an mma fighter and got hit and broke his orbital bone and we were, he was in the next day with a bandage on his head doing shoulders i'm like do you want to take a day off he's like there are no days off <laughs> so they're just so honestly just the people that i've come across with the marines are the most mentally strong uh, people that I ever trained with. <laughs> and don't you yeah, think a great story that is, you know, that you, here you are, you, you you might have helped save, uh, save that young man's life, where I would think, you know, folks who know about it would celebrate it because you gave him a second chance and now he has a family and it's really, really important that you did that. But do you work with the, with the military? Do you work with the Marines at where you're stationed? Like, have you gone in and tried to do seminars or or share information with them? Because I think 
as you know now, there's only 23% of American youth between 17 and 24 who can serve. And a lot of the reasons they can't serve is because of lack of physical activity and obesity. So I think the message that you have, the knowledge that you have would be really, really beneficial to recruiters and to the military in general. Yes, I, I have actually, as I was retiring, I've been going around doing, um, speaking to the RS stations, uh, to the police, and then to some of the high schools as well. So I'm looking to keep doing that. I just signed up with a, um, a program with my church as well. So I'm trying to what, see if I get accepted for that. So I'm still on that same route. Hmm. What would you like to see as far as what message would you give to a, a new recruit who's going into the Marines? What would you, what advice would you give them going into boot camp and as far as getting ready physically and mentally? So one of the things that I always, you know, tell all of them is to stay open minded, but don't do what everybody else does because one of the biggest problems that we have is when we get assigned somewhere if you're really young and you're away from home you get in all sorts of trouble whether it be finances whether it be drinking you know and you mess your career up at the beginning before it even started so you know focus on the things that are important and then everything else is going to come you know training I always tell the young guys hey go to the gym go work out even if you're just there for 30 45 minutes like just start, you know, somewhere and work your way up because it's going to keep you out of trouble. And that goes a long way. Hmm. So you mentioned earlier about hitting the stage again. So we're about to hit 2020. When do you think you're going to be back? And do you have a, a target competition in mind? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I actually was looking at the end of this year and then that got pushed back. So uh, just my focus right now is buying a house so for my family. So that is what I'm planning to do. So possibly middle of the year. So, well, you're buying a house. Tell us about your, your board shorts and everything else so we can promote it <laughs> and to that down payment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm doing my board shorts. I am working on uh, a new look for my board shorts. So my whole, this whole time I've been away, I've been in school for music. Uh, audio engineering. I finished the school for that. Uh, also a school in LA for uh, arts development, uh, music production, uh, visual uh, photography, cinematography. And so I'm, I'm trying to be able to do all my stuff if I can on my own when I need to. Um, but the important part about that is that with my music, I am a lot of my videos for my coaching and everything. Everybody has issues with videos being stripped from like social media and stuff. I want to have my own music so I don't have to worry about royalties or anything like that. So all of my videos uh, have been, I've been using my own music, which is actually published, released on all platforms, um, even in Instagram, Facebook stories as well. Hmm. So how do people get in, in touch with the company or your social media and your, uh, the board short company, what's the, uh, is there a link? Yes, everything is on my Instagram. So they can go to my Instagram, Xavius underscore Gaten. And I have two websites. I'm trying to, in the process of merging them, uh, but they can contact me directly. There's like four Instagrams, actually XG board shorts, uh, team X, XG fit. Uh, and obviously my page, Xavius underscore Gaten. The best way to promote how about, how about a little love there for your wife? What about her her social media? <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah. Uh Sarah underscore Gaden. And honestly, she's been getting hit up as well for our, uh online coaching as well. So, you know, we've been working together with that. We've got a few females that are we've been working with. Rob, don't you think the best way for him to promote those board shorts is to compete in twenty three? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You know, I used to say it's the shoes, money, it's the shoes. <laughs> it's the shoes. <laughs> it's the shorts. Shorts. Yeah, I think, you know, yeah, but yeah. it's also showing your entrepreneurial spirit. You, you've come up with another company. It shows you, again, your dedication and your discipline because it's hard to have a family, have a business that you're working, you're doing music, you're competing, and you're making board shorts. I mean, that's a whole lot of things you got going on there. 
do yeah. it a lot. Yeah. To make all those things come true, to be successful in all of them is a lot of work. But what you're also showing is America's the best people I always feel are who serve our country are the best of America. And you're just showing that positive example of listen, if you're interested in serving our great nation, you can also be like Xavier. You can also do all these great things and you'll get a lot of training, a lot of discipline. You learn about cultural differences and diversity and inclusion through the military. So I'm always trying to, you know, tell people that it's a good option to think about. It's not for everybody, but for those people who like myself, who served 26 years, um, I enjoyed it. I would love to do it again. And like yourself, 21 years successful, you went around the world. Uh, you were an ambassador to our country. You fought for our freedom. So um, all great things and something that sometimes I think people need to be, they need to feel like they're part of something, something bigger than themselves, like the bodybuilding community here, like the Marines or the Air Force or the military overall. So, you know, continued success in all you do. Thanks again. Frank will make sure that those various websites and links be in the um, out our, you know, the outposts when we do this. But thank you for your time. We look forward to uh, following up with you again, especially after you win your, your next competition back. You'll be um, as a second time guest. So we're looking forward to that. As well. <laughs> and, what, and what did you say yeah. before? Put down that sandwich, get, step out from that desk. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they didn't like him, Frank. No, <laughs> I don't they didn't, they didn't, like you say that in an office full of people, like put down that sandwich and those cookies. We'd be peeling potatoes back. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have a lot of friends, so you know? It, it's, it's funny because my uh, my sergeant major pulled me aside one day, and he was a bodybuilder. And I was in Japan, combat assault battalion. He's like, Sergeant Major Caldwell, and he, I'll never forget it. He said, I'm going to need you to be an honest broker with me. I don't, I can't rely on everybody else to do it, but I can rely on you to do it. And I told him, I'll tell you, I wouldn't have it any other way, Sergeant Major. And ever since then, is I. As soon as I meet someone, look them dead in the eye, and that's the first thing I tell tell my command leaders. Well, we're happy to have you. Put the cookies away. That's the first thing you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> you look them up and down like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just shake your head. <laughs> well, again, we, we appreciate your time. Um, thanks again for all you've done, and you know when when I always like to remind people when you hear those stories about someone like yourself who invested in someone you didn't know and potentially saved their life. That's a big deal. And I'm sure you've done it more than once. So thank you for that. And I'm sure his family thanks, you know, thanks you as well. So we look forward to talking to you again. We look forward to seeing some new board shorts on the stage and uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, we appreciate thanks. it. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Take care now. Thank you.